And a very good afternoon to you, boys and girls. Well, I suppose uh, he got the hint eventually, didn't he? That Egyptian bloke, monster, wherever he is. He got the hint eventually. Thousands and thousands of people in this room. I think I should be a leader. Do you think I'd be a good political leader? Or would I be too soft? Yeah, I've got a feeling I'd be too soft. I'd be giving it all away, wouldn't I, eh? Good afternoon, my name's Chris Reardon. It's Saturday the... What is it? Saturday the um, 12th of February 2011. Just gone three o'clock in the afternoon. A very good afternoon to you. My name's Chris Reardon. This is United Kingdom Talk on United Kingdom Radio. And I'm just in... Uh, I've got to be honest. Um, before I came in, <clears throat> the whole weight thing is not doing too well, I'm afraid, boys and girls. Before I came into the studio today, right... I cannot lie. I had to try on three shirts before I found one which wasn't tight around the belly. Seriously. It's a bit... T they're all a bit tight around the belly. I don't know what's going on here. I, 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 I swear I don't eat loads and loads of snacks and things like that. But while I was on holiday in Australia a couple of weeks ago, uh, my cousin, his best friend, whose name is Simon, my cousin's name is Tim, one of my cousins is Tim, his best mate, mate, Simon, and his wife works in one of those keep fit places. Now, I went to visit him on the very last day. Is there someone ringing already? Just a minute. Someone ringing already. Good afternoon. Meow. Hello. Meow. Can I help you? Is it Katie the cat? Is it Katie? What do you want? Hurry up, quickly. Got five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Aborted. Um, <laughs> strange. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of sending me their phone number as well. So I may have to... <laughs> I may have to ring that number later and do meow no cat noises to them. What do you reckon? Now, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, um, my mate's wife works in one of those body zone places, you know, keep fit and all that business. And I did say to them, maybe I should visit, you know, the day before I go home. She's, and this girl said to me, her name's Brenda, lovely lady. Uh, she said to me, and she's 40, she's over 40. You would not think it. You would think she was sort of mid-30s, early to mid-30s. Serious. And she said, if I was to go down to her gym the day before I go home, she could guarantee that I would be able to sleep on the plane. I'm not quite sure what she meant by that. But she was saying, once you go over a certain age, and it's a different age for different people. You know, I managed to keep the weight off until I was 46, and then it suddenly started shooting up. All right? It's true. She said... After you get to a certain age, you re have real trouble. Your body does not respond as well to exercise or in the same way as like a 20-year-old a, a would. It takes a lot longer to shift those bones. And I'm certainly noticing this. You know, so my shirts, I can't do them up around the middle. I've got to do something about it. Absolutely have to do something about it. Um, I was kind of hoping that... Uh, my best friend Ron was going to move into this area, and now it's not so sure now. It was it was guaranteed, but we're not so sure now whether he's going to be able to move into this area or not. And now he likes the gym, and I thought, well, that's great. I will then find someone to go with. I do my swimming. I do my swimming. I walk. I cycle. But I, 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 I my my portion sizes for dinners are too large. I admit that freely. But on the other hand, I'm not eating endless amounts of snacks. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, um, hello to Scotty, who's with us in Tibby Island in the US of A. Very unusual for you to be with us alive. Hello, Scotty. He's, he's helped me in the past, this man, with the video side of things. He says, oh, my God, not that damn clock again. I'm being hypnotised. What's wrong with my clock? It sounds like Big Ben, doesn't it? What is wrong with my clock? Nothing, thank you very much. Please don't complain about my... You're jealous, aren't you, in the US? You're jealous that you don't have something like Big Ben or the Houses of Parliament in your back garden. You'd love it, wouldn't you? Go on, be honest. You'd love the Houses of Parliament or Big Ben in the US. I mean, you did try, I believe, and buy London Bridge once, and you ended up buying the wrong one. I mean, how can someone make that mistake? How comes you bought the wrong bridge? Eh? 
Anyway, Scotty says, what happened to the suntan? I thought you've just been on holiday down under. Did the fake tan wash off? Uh, excuse me, I am very tanned. It, you probably don't notice it unless there's someone quite white sitting next to you, I think. I, th I do think I look quite tanned, actually, at the moment. I am looking quite tanned. He says, I see a boomerang. Are we going to get boomerang lessons? Yeah, I have a boomerang behind me on the clock that you hear chiming now and again. Uh, we will not be getting boomerang lessons, I'm afraid. OK, no, absolutely no boomerang lessons. Right. They don't. I don't think they cut the <laughs> proper boomerangs are supposed to come back. Oh, sorry, he's in Tybee. Tybee is where he is. Tybee. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, good morning to uh, Wayne. Who says, would the Big Ben Bell fit in his garden? I doubt that very much. I mean, his place is in America. He's probably in one of those condos. Are you in a condo? Why don't they just call it a flat? It's a condo, isn't it, eh? Got me a cup of tea with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, you can join in by Skype if you want to. If you're with us live, check your clock. The time in the UK at this moment is just coming up to 11 minutes past three. On Saturday, the 12th of February, 2011, if that is the time where you are now, then you are indeed with us live, UK time, and you can join in live. We have a Skype and a phone number. The Skype username is all one word, United Kingdom Radio. OK, the Skype username, all one word, United Kingdom Radio. And we also have a phone in number, 020 3287 one four double eight oh two oh three two eight seven one four double eight let's try this one again good morning no we're just going to get animal noises from that so we'll um let me just write down the number and we'll block that one uh, there we are oh. <laughs> there we are actually instead of blocking the number maybe i should just ring it out should i just read it out to you all and then you can <laughs> is that legal? And then you can just start ringing him with, uh, with, with, with various... I haven't got my phone up here, actually, with various strange noises in the middle of the night. We could do something like that. All right, once again, uh, the Skype username, all one word, United Kingdom Radio is the Skype username. Phone number 020, it's a local num London number, 020-3287-1488. All right, 020-3287-1488. One four double eight. If you're not with us live, or you would prefer to sign in by um, uh, contact us by email, the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, a couple of people with us live this afternoon. Ben, hello, Ben. Good God, Ben from the Two Brewers is and Candy Cane Baxter. All these people are listening. I can't, can't believe it. Ben's with us and Candy Cane Baxter's with us as well. Good afternoon to you lot. Well, we should be seeing you all tomorrow night. I gather we've, we've got extra cabaret at the Two Brewers tomorrow night. I gather the band with no name. Has anyone seen them before? The band with no name? No idea what they're like. Anyway, apparently they're down the Two Brewers tomorrow. So I shall give you, of course, of course, an honest opinion of uh, how they perform next uh, on on Sunday. OK, uh, we've also got a, an email coming here from um, Ian. Oh, where is it now? Craig. Good afternoon, Craig, who says, hello there, Chris. Another weekend's here. All alone this Valentine's Day. Don't even go on about Valentine's Day, dear. It is my most hated day of the year after after the anniversary of my mum and dad's death. After that, my next most hated day of the year is Valentine's Day. I never get a bloody thing. Not a thing. The last Valentine's card I got was about the year 2003, I think, from Ashley. He lived in Brighton. That's the last Valentine's card I got. I, 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 did I ever get... I don't think I've got flowers, chocolates, nothing. It never happens. Doesn't happen. This morning, I thought, you know, you know... I mean, there has to be hope in one's life, doesn't there? Don't you think? You have to have a bit of hope. And once again, this morning, I thought, well, tomorrow's Sunday. Um, it's unlikely we're getting... Is it tomorrow? Hang on a minute. Oh, no, Valentine's is Monday, isn't it? Oh, there's still a day left. Oh, 
<laughs> there, you see, there is still hope. Without hope, we might as well all go and kill ourselves. I might do it this afternoon. As soon as I finish the show, I might go down and take two aspirins and kill myself. Is that enough? Two aspirins? Anyone else tried that? I might as well, because there's going to be no Valentine's cards once again on Monday, as usual. And please, Ben, Candy, do not bring in Valentine's cards tomorrow. OK, don't do it because I will know you've only bought them in because you feel sorry for me and you heard it on the show. Please don't start bringing in cards. It's too late. No, don't send e-Valentine's cards. It's just hopeless. And you know there are people. You know there are pretty young, pretty young people who have got three or four cards, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards from people and they don't even know who they're from. I mean, of course, I've got a cat. I know. I know in my mind of minds that if the cat could possibly send me a Valentine's card, it would do. I mean, one of the other things I could do, I suppose, because I am 48 now, and I, the Alzheimer's is starting to setting, I am forgetting things. So what I could do on Monday morning is set my alarm clock for very early, like eight o'clock in the morning, pop down to the news agent, get a few Valentine's cards, write them and send them to myself, Go out, come back home, go outside my front door, post them through the letterbox, come back inside, go to bed for a couple of hours, and then by then I will have forgotten that I've actually gone out and bought them and posted them to myself. And then when I come downstairs, I will have some Valentine's cards. Eh? And I won't be I won't be doing the the overpriced strawberries or the overpriced roses that all these florists do. What a waste of money that is, eh? How much for a bunch of roses? Thirty quid, forty quid. I tell you what, there's this, there's this bloke I know. His name's James. He goes out with a guy with 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 with, with a, a a guy uh, called Charlie, and I I I, I honestly cannot see. Him getting roses because she's a bit tight. She is a bit tight. And I don't think she's as tight as me. I mean, apparently, permission was given to have the heating on in their house the other day for a couple of hours. I can't believe it. I mean, the Earth's resources, they're running out and people just switch on their heating willy nilly. Oh, don't I know it. My best mate Ron came over last night. Now, he's the one that looked after my house while I was away, you see, right? And in those three weeks I was away, I happened to know that heating was on every single night. Not only during the night, the daytime as well. I could hear the meter going round and round while I was sitting there in the heat in Australia. 110 degrees. I could hear the meter going round there. Well, of course, he since he left, he, he went home last Saturday... And since then, it's all off, dear. It's all off. And then he starts going on about the hot water. And I said, well, what's wrong with the hot water? He said, you push, you have to push the button to get it. I said, yes, you just push the button 20 minutes before you want hot water. And then it's there. He said, no, it should be on the timer so that it's on demand. I said, well, it is on demand, isn't it? You push the button, it comes out 20 minutes. That's on demand, isn't it? What does he mean? Such waste, wasteful people, dear. Well, let me tell you, that heating has not been on since Saturday. Of course, last night he came over with his other off. They're in the spare room. I, I've come home from work. Oh, God, say it was like walking into a sauna. And let me tell you, I've been into a few of those, dear. It was hotter than... Well, I don't usually spend much time in a steam room, to be honest, and usually walking around and looking and peering at all the other rooms. But honestly... It was so hot in the house last night, and he's complaining that it was cold. This morning I got up, and the pair of them have got up as well, because we were doing some stuff there today. And um, I said, did you come straight to bed last night when you got in? He said, yes, we did, because we were so cold. And I said to him, well, in that case, if you went straight to bed, why on earth did you have to turn the heating on then? It's terrible. Well, I happen to know that that candy is that she is not going to get uh, uh, Charlie is not going to get James. I should I should be very disappointed if I find out 
that she's wasted her money on roses and blooming chocolates and and you know and you've seen the strawberries have you seen the strawberries in the heart shaped in the heart shaped uh, 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 what are they called plastic boxes they're all in there, aren't they? Dish get in the flowers. Oh, it makes me, it makes me feel sick. It, love it doesn't exist, dear. Only with your parents. And then only if you're very lucky. No cards for me. No cards for most of you. I bet there's most of you who are with us this afternoon. I haven't got a single... You won't have a single card, Monday. Believe me. Won't have a single card. And I've mentioned it time and time again. I'm sick to death of these people. Oh, it'll be your year this year. You'll find the right one. Or, oh, you just haven't met the right one yet. Or, oh, you're not looking in the right places. Or, oh, you won't find them if you're looking. Oh, shut up. It's all a load of old rubbish. There's no one. No one. Stop going on about it. And then maybe we can get on and do something more productive with our lives rather than looking for the next ch person to go out with. What did you think I was going to say then? Stop it now. Can I just do some messages, please? Wayne says, I've never had Alzheimer's, Chris. Uh, Chris, as you know, I have all these voices in my head keep me company and reminding me things. <laughs> he says... Two aspirins, damn, I've over OD'd. Yeah, I think two aspirins will do it. Two aspirins will take me to another planet. Mind you, I'm on another planet most of the time, to be honest. Hello to David and Kat, who join us from the Isle of Wight. I haven't heard from you two lately. Where the hell have you two been? And how's baby Charlie? They had a baby last year. Must be coming up to his first birthday now, is it? David and Kat on the Isle of Wight. Good afternoon, you two. Hello to Phil Huckley, who says, Break a break a matchbox. You've got a copy on this mystery man. Come on, 10-4, good buddy. Break a leg, break an arm, break a break. That's a little bit of CB talk. CB radios. Do you remember those? Very, very big in the 80s. And then they disappeared quickly when mobile phones came along. Which is a shame, really, because you could talk to people that you, you have no idea what they look like or what they did or what they were or anything like that. Wonderful CB radios. I met my wife through that CB radio. After that, I got rid of the machine. <laughs> There's a lot of people get into trouble on CB radios. A lot of people swearing and all that business. It, was all, it all got a bit like that, so we all came away from it. It didn't work anymore. Good afternoon to Phil. Um, David and Kat say the baby is fine. He's now nine months old. Blimey, doesn't time fly quickly? He'll be wanting his first birthday party soon. Perhaps you'd like to book me to do the children's party. Well, I don't think I've done a one-year-old's party before. I'm sure I haven't. James Dean is with us. Good afternoon, James. Not like you to be with us live, dear. How wonderful to hear, to see your little typing going on. Now, James, I must admit, he did ring me earlier on and I said I'd ring back. Sorry, James, I, I, I got caught up in all sorts of other things. I was being driven by my best friend Ron and his other half in their BMW with fold-down roof. Oh, it's marvellous. He pushes a button. <clears throat> We're sitting in a restaurant having a carvery. And he said, watch this, Chris. And he pushes his button and the whole roof on this car comes down and look at me with the Toyota I go to. That's all I can afford. It is. <clears throat> He's this, all these people with these flash cars, dear. How do they afford it? Huh? It's not fair. Little Toyota I go. That's all I've got. For, is it, how old is that now? I must be coming up in five years old now. I would love an electric car. That, that's what I want next as a vehicle. Whether I will go to the electric next, I'm not quite sure. There might have to be another one in between. I have been looking, only on the internet, mind, at the new Nissan Leaf. That's a new electric car, the world's, or, or certainly the UK's first real mass production electric car. But the thing is, it is the first one. It's pretty expensive at about £23,000. The running costs, certainly the fuel costs, are minuscule. I mean, minuscule in comparison to what I spend in fuel. Um, certainly, I, sp I suppose I spend about 45 to £50 per week in diesel. However, my car is one of the most economical diesel, diesel cars you can get. 
And the other thing that worries me with these electric cars, they, I'm sure they've been testing them for a number of years, but until you get a few out there, you know, in their hundreds, out there on the road, you can't be quite sure what's going to go wrong with them. You know, I mean, how long, for example, how long is that battery going to last? Because if it, uh, if it lasts 50,000 miles... Uh, I, in, in the car I've got already, I've done now 132,000 miles, right? And various things have to be replaced now and again. Yes, of course, as, as, as the normal service. I think I've got through several sets of tyres and one car battery now. But the batteries on these electric cars, how long do they last? And then, right, how much are they to replace when they need replacing. That's the thing. And I've, I've searched on the internet to see how much one of these batteries would be to replace, and I can't find anything about battery replacements yet. Certainly not on the main Nissan sites, you see. Uh, Wayne says, those electric cars will still need energy, Chris, and that will still have to be paid for. Yes, they do, Wayne, but the comparison uh, of, of plugging in your electric car for whatever length of time and filling it up compared to petrol or diesel is, is 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 hugely different you're talking of a few pounds not even 10 probably i would say a fiver for full charge perhaps less than that i mean i i i'm pulling no i shouldn't have said that i'm pulling numbers out of the air yet there but certainly in comparison to diesel or petrol it's pennies it really is but how long does the battery last and how much does it cost to replace? I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? James says, sell a flat and then you could get one. I'm not selling. Pro you don't sell property, dear. You don't sell property and unless you're absolutely desperate. I'm not selling flats, dear. What are you chatting about? Anyway, can we go back to this um, email that I was chatting away on this thing uh, a second ago? Um, oh, just a second. Ben says, oh, what a show. Ben, who comes in the two brewers on Sunday nights, he says, I've never had a Valentine's card in your life. Ben, I'm sorry to break this to you, but it's not going to happen this year either. It doesn't happen. I, I'm, I swear that most of these people who get these Valentine's cards and chocolates and flowers and strawberries in strange shapes, punnets, I think half of them are buying them for themselves. I really do. I can't believe people waste such money, like 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, on 12 blooming flowers. What a rip-off, dear. What a bloody rip-off. Don't do it. Go down to the local cemetery. There's plenty of flowers there. Once people leave them, they're not worried, dear. Go and pick a few out of there. You'll find some over there. And why does it have to be roses? It doesn't have to be roses. Just because you love someone. And uh, uh, Candy, could you turn up your computer or radio, whatever you're listening on? Could you let James hear this, please? I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds to turn it up, OK? So, Ben, I'm sorry about that. I don't think you're going to get a card tomorrow either. OK? Sorry, Ben. Um, Candy says she'll all, eat all the chocolates by herself. Well, that wouldn't surprise me, dear. Judging from how you looked like looked behind last week while I was while I was pushing the buttons behind you, I think you've been eating an awful lot of chocolates. Either that or sitting down a lot. One of the two. Now what why did I tell you to turn the radio up? Oh I've lost the plot now. Um What were we just saying then? I can't remember now. Sorry, you can turn it back down now because I can't remember. And Ben also says he's never heard of um, the band with no name. Oh, I have. I've heard of the band with no name. What, what they're like, I don't know. I have no idea what they're like. OK. Oh, is there something wrong with the video today? Are you having some people having problems with the video? Um, sorry, I don't know why that is. Is the video all right to some of you? Someone let me know if the video is OK. All right. Um, Phil says I've got an electric bike. Cost me nothing to charge as plug-in at work. There you go, you see? I mean, it really is, you know, fairly cheap to charge up 
these electric cars in comparison to filling them up with diesel and that. But I just think it's a, it's a little bit too soon to go with these. I think we need to wait a while and see how it goes, you know? James says, if my other half bought me flowers, I think he was feeling guilty about something. And James says the video is fine there. OK, it's probably Ben's probably got a very, very. Oh, no, it's Candy. She's probably got a slow connection. She won't pay out for the fast for the fast connection. You see, she will not pay out for the fast connection. It's just a shame, isn't it? Yes, don't don't buy flowers. They are, that's a little afternoon. If you're not working tomorrow afternoon, Charlie and James, pop down to the local cemetery and pick up a few daffodils. There's nothing wrong with daffodils. It doesn't have to be roses. Why does it have to be roses? It doesn't. Oh, that's it. Yeah, turn it up now. I've remembered what I'm going to say now. Turn it up now. Have you turned it up? James, that's Charlie's other half. James, listen, you do not have to spend money to show someone how much you love them. Just go over there and give them a big kiss on the lips, you know, with the tongues, blah, like that, you know, big kiss on the lips. That's what you've got to do. Don't waste money on flowers. They'll be dead in a week. What's the point of spending 50 quid on a few bits of green to go in a vase of water, which will go mouldy after a couple of days and then the whole lot die on you in a few days' time? It's a complete and utter waste of money. If you want to do something green like that, go and buy a plant, a nice pot plant. No, not busy, Lizzie, dear. Too early for busy, not geraniums. Too early for geraniums and busy Lizzies. I'm not quite sure what sort of plant you want yet. But if you go down the garden centre, there'll be plenty of them there. It'll cost you no more than four or five pounds. Maybe if you want to go mad, spend six or seven pounds. And they will be able to advise you. You walk into the garden centre. Hello, um, I would like a plant for a dark position in my house, which doesn't get too much light, you know. And they 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 sort you out there, and you will not be ripped off. Please, please, anyone watching this show or listening to this show now, do not waste your money on flowers and chocolates and strawberries. Waste of time. Take them out. No, not to a restaurant. If you want to take them out to a restaurant, do not do it tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday. Wait until next week, because by then all the prices have calmed down. If you want to take someone out for a good, um, good meal, a good meal, a value for money meal, then go to one of the many Toby Carveries, OK, or Crown Carveries in the UK, Type it into Google, Crown Carveries or Toby Carveries. You'll get a big list of all them up there. You can take someone out for a meal. And I'll tell you what, you know, you'll, you'll go out there, have a couple of drinks as well. And you will, you will probably spend no more than £15. No, it's not being tight. It's not being tight. It's about not being ripped off. I can't bear people being ripped off. And anyway, that's it. Let's see, some more messages coming in. Um... James is down the high street buying me flowers. I'll send him back to Get a refund. You're wasting your money. Don't buy flowers. Please don't buy flowers, Candy. For Christ's sake. Um, I, I can't read this one, uh, Charlie. It's come from Ben, one of your fans. No, I can't read it. Well, it, although it says she'll have a booty like Laquisha soon. Oh, no, she's not too bad, actually, dear. Oh, yeah. I'm the one with a fat bum at the moment. Uh, Simon says, Nick some flowers from the cemetery. What a romantic. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, the dead people don't want them. You know, I always go down the cemetery. I put flowers on my mum and dad's grave. But if someone nicked them to give to their mum or whatever, I suppose that would be all right, would it? Would mum, my mum, mind? I don't think she would mind, actually. She probably wouldn't. Hello to Fagash Lil in uh, Hove. Near Brighton, who says, video has been back to its old problems since you came back. Buffering for the first 10 minutes, but fine after that. Now, I'm afraid it's you, Bob, because um, uh, James up in Manchester says he's had no problems at all. OK, that's it. No problems at all. And if it's buffering for everyone that you watch, was well, only me and Lee do the videos. If it's buffering for both of us, then the problem, I'm afraid, is likely to be at your end. OK. Um, uh... Wayne says, oh, this is funny. Wayne says, um, getting flowers from the cemetery, that's a bit grave. Oh, God, that's funny, isn't it? A bit, bit slow with the uh, 
bit slow with the uh, jokes there. OK, email address once again, boys and girls, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Let's go back to this uh, email now, boys and girls, uh, after James says, no problems at all. But he is on fast broadband. Yeah, well, if you're on fast broadband, it, it, it will work better. Now, we were talking to a Craig who says, another weekend here, all alone this Valentine's weekend. Yeah, me, you and me alike. But I've got a do to do tonight. I've got a nice little straight pub I do on Saturdays, Belushes in Hammersmith. All the boys and girls are there. I love it. I love it. And you know when you get a bit older, you can see what's going on around the room. You can see who fancies who. Who's with who? Who's with someone and they really shouldn't be together? I mean, it sticks out a mile. I love it. I love it. Um, Craig says, don't know if you read my last email out. Which, well, of course, I've read the last email out. Weren't you paying attention when I did it last week? Was it Thursday? He says, Hinkley's Carnival is saved. So it's going to be our 50th carnival this year. in, in uh, Hink The Hinkley Carnival, which, incidentally, I haven't been booked to do. Most disappointed with that. I could see myself setting up on a little stage there or something like that. He says, there's a brand new committee. We talked about committees. Committees, you know, committees, the committee, committees. Let me tell you, boys and girls, committees are a complete and utter waste of time. Have you ever been to a committee meeting? Has anyone ever been to any sort of committee meeting? They all sit there and bicker and they backstab. I'm so glad it's not like that on the cabaret circuit. I really am. There's none of that. We're all nice as pie to each other. We really are. There's a new brand new committee at the helm of the new um, chair lady is Louise. Now, my uncle and mum are building something very special for this year's carnival. It's three full size Daleks from Doctor Who. And they will be complete with electric wheelchairs, voice modulators, all that work. Dalek, we are the Daleks. Release the bacteria. Release the bacteria. Oh, bathe the Daleks! <coughs> Ruined your, ruin your voice. I've got a bit, a, a bit of a cold, actually. Can you hear it in my voice? This came on last night while I was working. Um, Craig says, We're hopefully going to be with another charity called the Charity Dalek Squad. They have all kinds of Daleks, various look-alike monsters, canines, a look-alike Doctor Who, and Rose Tyler, plus much more. I, I tell you what I can't stand on Doctor Who, that girl. Now, what's her blooming name? Pond. Amy Pond. Can't bear her. Can't bear Amy Pond on Doctor Who. For Christ's sake, someone get rid of her. Oh, she's dreadful. Absolutely. Um, can we have the other writer back while we're at it, please? What's his name? Oh, you know... Um, can't remember his name now. The other, the, the, the other writer on Doctor Who. Oh, I don't know what his name was now. But we don't, we're not kidding on the new writing at all. And I can't stand Amy Pond. Get rid of her, dear. Get rid of Amy Pond, please, someone. Russell T. Davis. Thank you, James. Russell T. Davis was the other writer on Doctor Who. Very good. This one, not too, I find it difficult to follow, to be honest, a lot of the time. And the Christmas special this year was diabolical. Awful. Awful. Lost the way. Merlin, Merlin, which is another programme on the BBC at the moment, uh, it's, it's off now, uh, now walks all over... I don't, I don't actually use the term walks when I'm talking in private, but I shall in this case. The, the, uh, uh, the Merlin series now walks all over Doctor Who. It's fantastic, Merlin. Absolutely fantastic. Um, back to this email. Uh, they go out there in their spare time raising money for different charities here in the UK. So hopefully we'll have a good time in September. It's been put back to September the 11th, 2011. Previous years in our local carnival, we've done Emus, John Bull and Britannia and Toy Soldiers. Watching your show today as usual. Oh, excuse me, a bit of air come out of my, of my mouth then. Did you hear that? How rude. I found some designer t shirts for you on eBay. I will send you a link. And he's he's there. There's a picture of um, Craig. Who's the lady with you? Is that um, is that your sister or girlfriend? I don't know who that is. He's he's sent me a picture of him dressed completely in Union Jack hat, Union Jack shirt, and Union Jack trousers. We're quite liking that, and various other costumes there. So thanks very much for that, uh, Craig. Nice to hear from you, sir. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, I've lost something here. Now, we were just going to a, a, an email that, that came in just now. Ah, there we are. Hello to Richard. And Richard says, I'm one of your silent listeners from Cape Town in South Africa. You know, I think you're the first emailer from South Africa. So welcome along, uh, Richard, who says, what has made me come out of the closet, so to speak? Oh, you want to be careful how you use that term, my dear. There's plenty of them that are in the closet in the, gov in the British government at the moment. Obviously, no names mentioned. But you do have to worry about Cameron and Nick Clegg, don't you? There's something very suspicious going on between those two. I'm not quite sure. I can't put my finger on it. And I think I've got a feeling the Egyptian man's in, in it as well. I think he could well, the three of them are all up to something. I swear. I mean, he got the hint eventually, didn't he? The Egyptian bloke. Is he coming over here? I don't know. Um, what has made me come out of the closet, so to speak, is the new format your show has taken. It's so boring to say the least. You are the only one who can do the show, so please, please come back as soon as possible. Well, I'm here. I love your show, but only if you are doing it. These other guys doing your show, they're OK if you can be there too. Go well from Richard. Well, I am here. Oh, is this... Is this... Oh, I, I think you've been watching videos of other people's shows, haven't you? Yes, I am back now, Richard. OK, I am back from my holiday. Thank you very much for your kind, kind words. Oh, there's lots of good people here on United Kingdom Radio. There is. We've got lots of other people. And different people, they kind of relate to different presenters, if you see what I mean. You know, someone who likes my show will probably maybe not like other shows. And again, people who like, say, I don't know, Suko or Paul's show or someone. There are people who like those shows who won't like this show. It's true. That, that's just how it works. It's the same as like when you're out. You don't automatically like everyone that you meet, do you? Same sort of thing. So thank you very much for that. Do, I do, do appreciate what you're saying there. Thank you. Um, right. OK. So there we are. Back. Uh, did, we, did, we finish, um, did we finish his email? I think we finished uh, young Craig's email. Have I got anything else to read here? There was a couple of emails here I was going to read. But... Um, or have I done those already? What have I done with those? I'm sure I know a couple of emails here from someone. Didn't I? No, I'll put one of those. One second. They're here, they're here somewhere. Maybe I've done them already. Can I print those off? Or are they on the printer? What's this here? Oh, I've lost, I've lost some bits of paper now. I? I know what I've done with these. Uh, one second, let me lean over here. Oh. Oh, that's it, got them. There we are, got them. We'll do those in a minute. All right. Right, let me give you the email address again, boys and girls. So it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Skype in, United Kingdom Radio. That's the Skype name, United Kingdom Radio. If you want to call in on that as well, that's fine. We can do calls. And there's a phone number as well, 20 Three two eight seven one four double eight oh two oh three two eight seven one four double eight. We've got a new bloke uh, doing a show tomorrow, uh, Oliver. The show is called the Banter Hours, and he is on Sunday afternoons between four and five o'clock. Okay, Sunday afternoon, four and five o'clock, Oliver with the banter as I don't know if he's listening uh, with us at the moment if he is maybe he wants to call in and tell us all about his brand new shows okay the banter hours tomorrow uh, between four and five o'clock here on United Kingdom Radio let me tell you some more um, about my little holiday that I, I have uh, recently uh, been on now the night before uh, let me have some more tea this is getting a bit cold this is Oh, I'm feeling rather dry now. As dry, my mouth is as dry as the bottom of a budge's cage. It really is. Mm. So my holiday, now I started telling you about this on Thursday's show. On the first night I got there, I met up with Paul and uh, his other half, Wayne, and we had a nice pizza in a place. Oh, it's lovely, this pizza. Very big. And then they took me uh, to this ice cream shop called... Gel gelatinos or gelatos something like that that's the wonderful ice cream shop and it's very good this particular ice cream shop if you're feeling a bit thin and you want to put on some weight 
best way is to go in Sydney on Oxford Street at a place called Gelatinos, a gelato. I think it's gelatos, actually, gelatos. And in this, like, cabinet, you have all these different flavours of ice cream sitting there waiting for you to choose. And you choose the ice cream. You know, you might, I think I had um, honeycomb and apple pie flavour. Very nice. And then you can also choose some sort of sweet, um, like a Mars bar. I had Mars bar, uh, a, a Mars bar or, or Kit Kat or something like that. And then they get the sweet and the ice cream and they smash up the sweet into the ice cream. And they, oh, it's wonderful, dear. I ended up going about seven times altogether. You know, not in the same night while I was actually there seven times. Very, very tasty indeed. So that's what I did the first night. That, that was the first night I got there. On the second night I got there, I met up with a very good friend of mine called Steve, who also worked in a pub uh, called The Two Brewers. Now, unfortunately, um, that number's ringing again, the same number that, uh, that made the cat noises earlier. So once you've done that, you see, you don't get answered again. You get ignored after that. Because it was cat noises, then dog noises. For all I know, you're just going to do a buttery gar next. I, I, I don't bother after that, you see. Because it's a bit silly, isn't it? You know? Um, uh, the day after that, I went to a pub and met up with my friend Steve. Now, he used to be a barman in one of the places that I used to work again. And uh, we went to a pub called the Imperial. Now, the Imperial pub is where they did um, the uh, part of the part of the film Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Um, which was excellent. I mean, excellent. Has anyone seen that? Priscilla Queen of the Desert, a wonderful film. So we went down to this pub, and it's it's recently been renovated, and they've done wonderful things in there. They have had to soundproof, <coughs> at enormous cost, the entire building. And now when you go in there, now you, you, you can't hear anything at all outside. You know sometimes when you, get, you go past pubs and you can hear the noise blaring out the side? Right. In this particular pub, you can't hear a thing. The, the soundproofing is so good in there, you cannot hear. And you go in it, oh, it's so loud. It's wonderfully loud. And they have a cabaret bar, they have a front bar, then they have a cabaret bar, and then they have a downstairs club. And they've spent a fortune on this place. And it was nice to see um, uh, uh, one of my dear friends, uh, Steve, there. <clears throat> on Saturday... Um, I went to uh, the Botanical Gardens in Sydney, and I always like, I've been to Australia four times now, and I always like to have a few walks through the beautiful bot Botanical Gardens in Sydney, which is kind of on the way. If you walk down from the city towards um, the Opera House, you'll come to the Botanical Gardens, or, or, or you have to walk a bit further, depending on what part of the city you're coming from. And uh, that's all really, really nice. It's, it's a beautiful place there. Did that. And then I met my... Um, uh, my uh, cousin Helen. Now Helen actually lives in Surrey. In fact, Helen is actually on her way back here now to the UK on a plane. Poor old soul. She'll have been on that for ages by now. Hours and hours. So, um, oh actually she might be back by now. They're usually coming in the morning uh, here in the UK. The, the plane's coming back from Australia. She, she might be back now, but she was coming back today. So I met her because I did promise to take Helen out when I got to Sydney for lunch. And I did indeed take her out, and we went mad, and we went to Subway. Yes, boys and girls, uh, a wonderful ham and cheese sandwich with all the uh, bits and pieces thrown on that, and a lovely cup of English breakfast tea. I had the usual problem whenever ordering tea in Australia, or indeed anywhere, including the UK, and that people seem to pour in half a pint of blooming milk. Every time. Can I just have a bit of milk, please? Oh, yes, OK. And then you watch them and they pour it the, and I send it back. I'm sorry, you've put too much milk in. Oh, well, how much did you want? I said, well, I did say a small bit of milk. But they don't. They put in half a bottle of milk and it's vile. It, vi t milky tea is just absolutely vile. It really is. Why do they do it? Why do people, can't they, can't they hear me? Just a small bit of milk. It's got to the point now where I say, do you mind if I put the milk in? You know, usually they hand over the hand over the bottle and I do it myself. And I'm actually quite shocked to see how little I put in. I do like a strong cup of tea. So we had that as well. I, I then, um, uh, uh, Hell and I, then we we both got iPhones. We've got iPhone 4s. So we then went for a little walk to see whose Wi-Fi we could steal. So that we, would, <laughs> we wouldn't have to pay to use the internet. And there's actually, there's plenty of shops 
where they have uh, free Wi-Fi. You don't even have to go in the shop. You just stand outside. You don't have to buy anything. It's wonderful. Don't have to buy anything at all. If you just stand outside the shop, okay, and log on to whatever, and then use the internet there and send your emails and, and your Facebook messages and that sort of thing. Oh, it's very easy. Very easy indeed. Um, so I did that. Um, while I was um, chatting to Helen in Subway, I find out because she was a little bit late. Not that I was complaining. She's only about 10 minutes late. She was a bit late. She said, do you want to know why I was late? I said, go on. Now, Tim, who's my other cousin, it's her brother. Do you know, my nose has become very stuffed up since I've been sitting here. But I did say I had a cold. I'm just going to blow my nose. One second. I'll, I'll push the button so you can't hear this. Just There we are, that's better. My cousin, Tim, who is Helen's brother, now he lives in Australia with his wife and his four absolutely adorable children. Uh, there's Fred. Fred is the little one. There's Archie. He's the next one up. There is... Uh, 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 F not Flynn. Finn. Finn. I would say Flynn. There's Finn, who's the next one up, and there's India, who was uh, coming up to her ninth birthday. Uh, so my cousin was dropping Helen off to come and see me. And there is an, a, a reasonably new, I say new, it's been there about a year now, a new tunnel that brings people into Sydney um, under the, uh, I, I don't know where, un, under all the other roads, or I don't know where it goes. Um, and Tim, unfortunately, broke down in the middle of the tunnel on a bend. And it was looking rather dangerous. And she was telling me they, they were terrified, all these people, in the car. You had the children and uh, what have you. I mean, quite quite a frightening experience, really. Um, so they that's why she was late. I mean, can you just imagine that? Being stuck in a tunnel? You know, fast traffic coming, because you don't see... And on a corner, and in the middle lane. I mean, he couldn't exactly get out and push when he had one of these 4 by 4s I, I don't even know if you can actually push 4 by 4s Can you do that? I'm not quite sure if you can actually push 4 by 4s Maybe you can, I don't know. But I was stuck there for some time. And then eventually he rung up the police and the police put him through to someone else. And they were saying, um, uh, uh, oh, well, well, we can't see you. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can see you. We're sending someone out and apparently someone sent them out and they moved. But for, the, for that while, when you can you imagine, you know, four children in the back of your car. And all this traffic coming at you from all directions. So very, very scary. So poor old Tim uh, broke down in the tunnel. Um, and then uh, after that, what did I do after that? I said goodbye to Helen. And Paul and Wayne invited me over to their house for a little meal. So we had a, a lamb chops, which of course he did on the barbie. Everything's cooked outside. They got a nice flat um, in Surrey Hills, I can't remember the name of the road now, and I could w actually walk, I mean, this is stupid, right? I've been going to visit my friend Paul and his other half for four years, and they've always lived in the same place in Surrey Hills. Um, and I've always got a train, I've gone from my hotel to the train station, gone, I think, one or two stops, and then walked from there. Well, little did I know, it's actually just as quick to walk directly there from the hotel. How mad is that? So we had some lamb chops, and uh, that was it. So there's a little bit about my holiday there. We've got a phone call coming in. Uh, there'll be, be some more, possibly towards the end of the show, or I might, might, might leave the rest now till Tuesday, because we've got a call coming in from David and Kat on the other way. Hello, you two. Hello, Chris. All right? Yes, thank you. Oh, you sound a bit funny today. I'm in a happy mood today. You what? I'm in a happy mood. Are you in a happy mood? Yes. Why? What's happened? Because Charlie can now walk. Oh, can he really? Is he talking yet, though? No, not yet. Do they talk before? Who's running up and downstairs? That's Charlie crawling. It's not. Yeah. Well, he crawls very loudly. Yeah. <laughs> He's a loud crawler, mate. Yeah, he is. He's right behind me, actually. Oh, good. I'm very pleased to hear that, my love. When did he start walking and crawling and all that? Um, eight months. Really? Yeah. Oh, bless his heart. Coming up to one in April. Oh, you'll be surprised how quickly they grow up. I've got two weddings to go to this year, my niece and my nephew. Oh, cool. Yeah, two weddings, one in April and one in May. Oh, well. That's right, I'm really, that really looking forward to those two. I just uh, saw, I, I don't know why, but my nephew and, um, did I say cousin or nephew then? Nephew. Nephew. Yeah, my nephew 
and his girlfriend. They, I've never heard of this before. They had a joint hen and stag party. I've never heard that before. I mean, I saw the pictures, quite frankly. I mean, they wouldn't look out of place on the Jeremy Kyle show, dear. Yeah. I, I don't know what she had on. She had these devil horns on, dear. And um, he looked like he was rat, rat, he was very, very drunk, you know, absolutely drunk. Even my little nephew, 13, I don't think he was, he looked like he was a bit worse for wear. Oh, God. He was holding, the 13-year-old was holding up a pair of blow-up breasts. <laughs> oh, it was dreadful. Oh, absolutely no. dreadful. That's not fair, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. No. Eh? No. <laughs> Any other news, my darling? Yeah, well, I've had a bit of a bad time this month, couple of months. Go on. That's why I've not been on. Why is that then? About August, September time, my disabled cousin died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What, what happened? Is it just how it, it was, or...? No, he was... He, they said he was going to live till he was 21, and he lived till he was 24. Oh, and he God. died of a heart attack, they reckon, and pneumonia. Oh, and he was disabled, oh, there's, but... There's a terrible, terrible noise coming over with you today. I'm going to have to let you go, my love. Yeah, that's the on the laptop. Oh, is it? OK, we'll get a new other computer next time, oh, darling. Laptop. I'm sorry to hear about your... Um, was it your cousin, darling? That's all right. Was it your cousin? Yes, it was. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. But, you know, one has to remember, there is no more pain anymore. No, there isn't. And you can oh, always... Charlie says hello. Pardon? Charlie says hello. OK, hello to you too, all right? It's waving. Cheerio, cats. Cheerio, take Cheerio. care. Bye-bye, cat. There are cat, and, uh, cat on the Isle of Wight there. Not a very good uh, sounding call there. I don't know what was wrong with the uh, equipment there. Uh, probably at their end. Uh, Jason, hello, Jason, who's in Cambridge, says, Hello, Chris, just noticed your show was on and thought I'd pop by. You pop by as much as you want, Jason. He's the one that does all the um, graphics and things that you can see on the recorded uh, side of the shows. If you ever miss any of the shows, you can always pick them up by going to United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk united kingdom talk dot co dot uk that's the main website for this particular show all right there are many many other shows here on united kingdom radio have a look at the schedule tells you who's on when live and when they're not on live there's usually uh, well, there is always a, a, a recorded show of some sort playing out simply go to united kingdom radio dot co dot uk united kingdom radio dot co dot uk now uh, often people say oh how do you finance the station i finance the station OK, uh, but uh, we are trying to make a little bit of money by selling my non-stop DJ mixes. There's usually a new one up each week. The next one up will be going up on Monday. But at the moment, the one up for the 5th of February is still up now. If you want to download that, it will cost you 80 pence. And once again, the money to that goes towards running a little station here. And you can find those at Chris Reardon Show. .co.uk. Once again, 80 pence is what that'll cost you. I don't know what that is, about $1.30, something like that, $1.40. Of that, you get an hour and 20 minutes of music, complete with a track list, OK? All licensed by the PRS. I have a podcast licence, so that's uh, all there. And uh, once again, 80 pence. Download, download those from Chris Reardon Show .co.uk. Chris Reardon Show .co.uk. Uh, Scotty says, just noticed we can see the bald patch in the mirror ball. What of the hair? <laughs> of course you can. That's because I am bald. Of course you would see a bald patch because that's why I am. Simon says, no wonder you have put on weight on holiday. All you did was eat. I, that's not true. I hardly eat a thing. I don't eat much at all. That's the truth. Well, I don't eat lots of snacks, but the portion sizes of what I do eat do tend to be quite large, and, and I'm pretty sure that's the problem. I am, I'm trying, I'm def desperately trying to make the portion sizes smaller, but it's hard, isn't it? You know, it's hard when, you've, when, you, when you're used to big dinners like that. It is very, very hard to make them smaller. It really is. Uh, email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, just before I go today, um, I'd like to say thank you to my best friend Ron, um, who I hope will listen to this show. He doesn't 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 show any interest in any of these programs, I'm afraid at all. 
no interest at all. That's what best friends do, isn't it? How many people out there, I wonder, do something, whether it's show, anything sort of to do with a show of some sort, music, uh, singing, anything like that, and you find your best friend doesn't support you. They don't, they're not interested, are they? It's very, very difficult. Anyway, he bought me a brand new printer for my birthday. He was saying, have you got a scanner? I said, no, that's one thing I haven't got, and I keep meaning to get one. Um, but I never actually got one. He said, you've only got a black and white printer, haven't you? I said, that's right, yeah. Well, he's gone out and bought me one of those all-in-one scanner, printer, photocopier things, which is very nice. An Epsom one, which is sitting just over there. Um, those of you watching, you can't see it. It's, it's out of view. But I've set it up there. Not only that, but it's wireless. How wonderful is that? No longer, because quite, quite frankly, I've got no more USB sockets in the uh, in the back of my uh, computer free at the moment. They're all full up with various bits and pieces plugged into them. So so that's why that is. So thank you very much to Ron for my uh, birthday present of a lovely brand new Epson printer. And I can do colour photos as well. So I've only got black and white, you see. I had a brother, brother photo, does all the paperwork and printing out and all that business. Song sheets for the karaoke and the other various bits and pieces I do. Anyway, time for me to go, boys and girls. I'll be back with you again on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. UK time. Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock UK time. Email address for the show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk main website for this show unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk alright, thanks so much for watching and listening bye bye now